Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have decided that the first thing I want to do in this video is to make a more robust Mars orbiter mission after all of the fiascos we had in the previous video. And so now I've got one with a little dedicated hypergolic stage here so that it can tag along and we won't have to worry about boil off. So we've got not only 3000 in the probe there but also 3000 in this stage that can be carried all the way to Mars. And then the hypergolic stage that we have, not the hypergolic stage, the cryogenic stage that we had before, which was hydrogen and oxygen. And in this case, it's been expanded to 3.2 meters and has two of the engines instead of just one. And so these are two SE2010V engines. And so that's there. And that burns for seven minutes. And then we have a stage with double the engines as well. Uh, I've got four of the SE2100 engines down here, and that gives us a healthy surface thrust weight ratio, 2 minutes and 40 seconds burn time. And overall, we have uh, something like more than 9,000 meters per second over what we need to get to orbit. So if it takes 4,500 to transfer and 4,500 to capture and get to our targets, Phobos and Deimos, then we can do that. So hopefully this will be robust enough to take care of business this time. And I'm going to save that. And it still takes 39 days to build only, uh, partly because we added some points uh, to the construction and uh, some of the build points. And I'm going to make two of those. And those will be in the second build slot initially. There's a backup series flyby, but that, uh, that obviously won't work. Um, let's just put it down there for the time being. The links on the buzz rocket is the big deal, but let's take care of some of this stuff. So this just has a dummy maneuver there. I don't, I don't know if it can do anything. It was if I had thought of some way of saving it was the goal here. By the end of the previous episode, I was too tired to fill around with maneuver nodes anymore. You know, we just left Earth space. There's no reason for it to have flipped around 180 degrees away from the sun when we were definitely spinning pointed at the sun before. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna waste any more time on this. We, we clearly can't get an encounter right there due to the way our ejection was weird pointing at the Earth. That was very flawed. Well, yeah, I'm just going to let this be. Uh, no reason to waste time on it. Now, there's still a chance that one of the Mars orbiters will actually work. Next opportunity is a long ways away. All right, we have this correction with this Mars moon orbiter. And then let's take a look at it. This looks like the most likely one to actually work. Indeed, we have a capture plotted there. That capture 2800, this correction 6.1, and this correction brings it from that location down into there. So, let me very gently nudge it over to the maneuver node. But of course, once we get into the yes, uh, it's, uh, it's already, ah, uh, but we have to go point at the sun anyway. But, yeah, we'll deal with that when we get there. Seems like a lot to be doing, though, there. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm going to roll. And this is pointed at the sun. And SOI change alarm is what I want. All right, so that's done. Mars Orbiter 2. All right, so the maneuver for Mars Orbiter 2. I'm going to let this just turn on its own because uh, I don't think it's... Well, it's got plenty right now, but I think it's coming in too fast to capture properly. I mean, it'll capture, but it's not going to capture in a way that's going to help. What the heck is it doing? Um, no, that's not good. <laughs> Whatever, the, whatever this, okay, hold on, just kill rotation for now. Whatever this maneuver is trying to do, it's not doing well. Okay, that would be better. Oh, um, 
That's going clockwise. Okay, no, that's the wrong way around. Oh, I hope the other one's going the correct way around. And how much will it take for this to capture? 2,700. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be doable. Well, I mean, it is only a flyby. So, that's interesting. It's not an orbiter. Maybe I can do a flyby. We'll see. Okay, but first we have this hefty thing to do. 119.7. And probably didn't even have a Mars encounter yet. Oh, 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 oh. okay, oh, stop. Just turn to the sun. That's less than satisfactory out there. Okay, well, that's better. I'm gonna make a wobbly roll right here. Okay, so, well, that's a little bit better, and hopefully it won't cost as much, but um, I'll do an SOI change alarm. Okay, so once we get in there, we'll see. But it's now roughly pointed at the sun to get power, and let me get it to recharge it a little bit before I leave it. Now, because those are flybys, Maybe we can just have that flyby mission, instead of trying to capture and then fly by Deimos and Phobos, maybe just fly by, right? We, we don't have to have it capture into orbit around Mars. It's really hard to fly by Phobos or Deimos without capturing around Mars first, because they're so small. But it's possible. So let me time warp to that, and we'll see if I can make it happen. Our big rocket is still under construction, so this, <laughs> we would just have to time warp to that anyway, eventually. But also there's this Jupiter window, and I'm wondering about RTGs. There's this mini Topaz reactor, but it's 40,000 a pop. And we would still have to research advanced electrics, which we can't do. We really only have solar panels, and those aren't very good at Jupiter. But, you know, we could Juno this and have a huge amount of them. Let's say I renovate the Mars Orbiter 3 that we just got. And we want minimal instruments, maximal power. These are the straight out ones. Well, these don't turn towards the sun. If we're going to get maximum power, we need a larger body to just simply fit the panels on. So we need a pancake. Let's make sure the antenna can work. Seems to. So these are the tracking ones. Now I want Jupiter. And these only get 11 watts, well say 9 watts at Jupiter when they get 300 here. It's uh, generally a factor of 25 there. Now those are like 70 watts a piece. Well, well, I went back to it. Okay, 73 watts a piece. I mean, this might, this should allow us to get into orbit around Jupiter and maybe fly by a moon, but you know, that might be hoping for too much. A little bit too much overlap. Okay, well, we will see. It's a lot to ask for. But we've got the Jupiter window coming up. This should be done in time if we build it in build it right away. Jupiter orbiter. I'll call it an orbiter because I think it can capture. And yeah, building it right away, 82 days, plenty of time for the window. Just one though, just one. Okay, we are back with this mission, which is only able to do a flyby of Mars, and once again is turned opposite the sun for reasons. And let's see if there's some maneuver I can do inside Mars SOI as we, let's just get into the SOI. Okay. That can solve our problems by at least grazing the SOI of Phobos or Deimos. 
It's probably easier to do Phobos like this. This is definitely going around the wrong way. We've got 2,000 to work with to somehow finagle something. Okay, well, we have a flyby. Phobos periapsis 37,000. It wants below 100,000 meters, 100 kilometers, which, like, any attempt to get into Phobos SOI will do that. And we have to transmit some science. Well, okay, uh, we better do this burn. I expect that this is still going to be really touchy as we approach. Well, it says that there's a periapsis there. Sort of want to smack this into Phobos, but okay, we'll take that. And we are recharging, so it's going to roll a bit. And leave it here. Okay, and we'll follow that in. Yep. Uh, well, it's recharging, but this is not the best angle for that. But uh, yeah, okay, this is getting worse and worse as far as the angle. But it looks lit. But no, this is eventually going to hurt me. I'll just do another correction later. This is, yeah, it doesn't look like it's messing us up much. All right, we've still got a Phobos periapsis and now we're pointed at the sun. Nope, there's Mars. Okay. Doesn't seem like we need another correction. Okay. Should be able to see Phobos now. Right? <laughs> Phobos, you around here somewhere? Ah, there it is. Alright, there's Phobos. Doesn't look like we're getting close enough. Let's see. It says we are. Okay, Phobos, quickly, science. Okay, Phobos flyby is done. We have received science. We have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Okay, nothing more that we can do, and we're now in Mars space. All right, there you have it. All right, so this one managed to get something after all. Now we just have to do Deimos, which is actually the easier one, generally speaking. But first, launching for Jupiter which is also to satisfy a flyby mission, so that's nice. This, uh, well, we'll point at the sun and let it continue trying to do something. Now with Deimos, we also want to get science data from the surface, ideally. So in that case, we really want to get into orbit around it and land the little probe. Uh, even though they're not looking like landers, since it's Deimos, it doesn't matter. The orbital speed is two meters per second anyway. So, yeah. Uh, that's a little bit more complicated if we want to try that portion of it. But first, Jupiter. Fortunately, Jupiter is much more lenient about captures and everything. Or even flybys. It's not hard to fly by Jupiter. We just need to make sure we have comms and power. The delta V variation is very low. In other words, you generally know how much delta V you need to get to Jupiter. That's not usually the problem. As opposed to higher variations with Mars and Ceres. Well, especially Ceres. Well, still using the moon as reference. We are launching at night. That seems to suggest it's eight hours away, but that's... We'll just pass on thinking about that for now. All right, so this rocket has a kerosene oxygen first stage, hydrogen oxygen second stage. We talked about this earlier. This is the one that was modified from the previous Mars orbiter mission. Throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. Four of these SE2100 engines, and launch. Should be frisky. I did set two of the engines to an action group so we can turn them off for limiting the thrust-to-weight ratio. 
Okay, two engines out. As you can see, even with two engines out, it gets to uh, about 5 Gs, a little bit over 5 Gs staging. And the two Hydrolox engines. And where the heck are the fairings? And there go the fairings. All right. Well, might as well. Well, we'll wait till we sell. No, I think they should have enough clearance. The panels. I'm just thinking about. They should, even if they tilt around, be clear of everything. The critical solar panels. Okay, and shut down. Well, that's a more circular orbit than I normally get into. 233 by 229. And we've got 9,970 left, so unless something completely ridiculous has gone on, we're getting to Jupiter. What do we uh, have comms? I mean, we should have comms and we should have power, but we'll see. Um, the planner, ASAP, well, that's a 6,276, that's what I expect. All right. And we'll make sure we're not pointed at the planet when we do the burn. That would be good. The first chunk of it should only take two minutes after all. No call for a radial component at all. Do have some boil off though. I guess I didn't put MLI layers on this. Okay, you know, it looks like the maneuver node is not going to drill us through Earth. Alright, well, let me just start now. Let's go to Jupiter. I thought we were going to get to the big rock at this time, but as it turns out, um, the failures might not have been failures, so we're going to be focusing on the probes again, and then we'll get to the big rocket next time. Because uh, we still got the Mars or Moon Orbiter, which is supposed to actually get to Deimos, and then the Mars Orbiter 2, which might be a backup, uh, both arriving, and those are arriving before the big rocket is finished. That one will take 97 days. So, well, we'll like to see them actually work out for us. And then maybe we'll have to repurpose the newer Mars orbiters that we've got, which is fine because as we've seen with this one, they've got so much Delta V that they can go other places. Okay, and staging. Ignition failure on the center engine. Well, that sucks. That's the 12 kilonewton one, but that's why I put the four, four kilonewton ones on, just in case there was a failure, but they're going to take a lot longer to do the burn. So that's going to be a problem. Yeah, 28 minute burn time instead of 7 minutes. But we still presumably got enough to correct the mistake. It's rough though, we're supposed to be going out that away. And we're going to be off. But again, it's Jupiter. It's any place that's easy to get to, <laughs> it's Jupiter. Surviving in Jupiter, around Jupiter, is not so easy in real life, because there is radiation and everything. But that is, that aspect we don't have to worry about so much. I don't think even Kerbalism introduces radiation limits for parts. I'm not sure about that, but I don't think so. Darn it, I might have just given them another idea to make things more complicated, huh? We're trying to go radial. Probably we don't even have to, but I'll just leave it be. At least for this burn. Okay, well, it's wasting a chunk right now. They're like down 800. Let me just see what we can do with our current trajectory instead of what we had plotted before. 
Okay, well, that's a start, and then we'd have to do a mid-course correction. Let me just plot that to see how much. And that'll get us roughly in the plane of the moons. And for a flyby, we want less than 20,000. kilometers, so that's okay. That would be good, and that should help out with the capture. And really, the capture is very light, as you can see, 500. So we can capture, and then maybe we can do some other things. Get some extra science. So it should still be doable. We'll just do this maneuver to replace the Maneuver that we couldn't quite manage because we lost the center engine there, which is bigger than the other four. Okay, ignition. Okay. Separation and ignition. Oh, we have three engines here at least. Okay, let me replot the mid-course question. Let me clear all those. But we do have an approach to Jupiter here. So Jupiter's atmosphere is at 1,550 kilometers, so this should be safe. And I will take that. So we're going to add that alarm, 286 days. I don't feel a pressing need to reorient this. Um, it's got plenty of solar panel repointed at the sun, so I will leave it like this. Okay, so going back to Mars, for a potential arrival at Deimos, we will see, but we have to capture around Mars first with that one, and then try to get an encounter with Deimos. Okay, so this Mars Moon Orbiter is now in Mars SOI, and let's see what we can do with it. Move up. Just get rid of that and make a new one that's sooner. And we will eventually want to get to Deimos, but this time we are actually capturing. That's a lot of inclination with respect to the moons of Mars, but I guess we'll take it. Okay, so I'll do this correction, 70. All right, that's safe enough on the periapsis. And let's check the capture. Well, it costs a lot, but we have it. And we'll keep it to that level, I think. So costing, well, let's say that much, uh, 2,800 on the capture. Well, let us proceed. And we'll have great comms at periapsis. Yep, but uh, I probably should have started earlier. And ignition. Oh, we've got the gravity scan here, Lowlands. That's about it. Yeah, I should have started earlier. This is suboptimal. Okay, alright, well we've captured. Let me just have it stop rolling all over the place. And Deimos. Well, it definitely doesn't take much to boost up to Deimos level. Okay, so like that, and then we'll have it timed when we bring it down to Deimos level, and we'll probably correct that descending node and do a little bit of radial. But in 17 days, we'll go up there. We're still facing the sun well enough. Well, very well, in fact. Uh, 17 days doesn't interfere with anything else, so let's just go up there and do this thing. Ignition. Okay. And we've got something going there. Okay, we've corrected most of the inclination there, though. We seem to have a radial thing going, which isn't great. But I think with the delta V that we have, we can deal with it once we get there. So 400 there. I mean, I hope I'm right about that, but I think we'll be going slow enough that it's not a big deal. So, yeah. Once we get to periapsis, we'll do this, and then it'll be a small amount of time until we meet up with it, though. Uh, well, it'll be just before the other Mars orbiter gets in. 
If this works, we really don't need that other one, but let's see. In this case, we do need to turn for power. Oh, we have an RCS block failure. Uh-oh. <laughs> I really shouldn't focus on it while, uh, while time warping. Modern control core communication failure. Okay, I, I'm sold. Let me just go to the tracking station. I just need to turn all that off, really. Okay, ignition. This bringing our orbit down to Deimos level, or close to it. Closer to it. And getting, hopefully, an encounter. But it's not showing that encounter right now. Well, now it's not really showing an encounter at all. I'm trying to see if Mechjeb will say something. Well, it's not whatever that's showing, that's for sure. Well, that, that is a closest approach distance that's really close. But not necessarily close enough, we'll see. Uh, we have to turn for sunlight, though. Well, no, that's closer. But is it right? We're missing one thruster right now, that's another thing. Well, uh, now it's showing the encounter with Deimos. And that says 253, so we have enough to capture. Okay, where is this potato? Alright. Alright, orbit retrograde. Let's send some science. That should fulfill the flyby, yeah, it does. This is very lightweight, it doesn't have the other instruments. Because we had apparently messed up a couple of times. All right. Mm. Oh, we can get a little bit closer. Okay, ignition. Okay, that's maybe a little bit too low a periapsis. We want to land on this side because it comes and potentially power, so not on that side. And I'll well, just turning might fix it. <laughs> okay, that seems nicer. Let's just go with that. Okay, but over here I want to sort of do the opposite of that. Um, I'm just using the RCS randomly here. Not randomly, but probably not what I want there. Oh, I'll just take that, and when we go over there, we'll figure it out. Okay, so over here, Cephas negative. Ah! Deimos. Yes, something like that. Okay, well, it's going to take a bit. But in we go. I should have had thrusters facing the opposite direction so that we could have some help push ourselves into the surface. But okay, just for safety's sake, I'm going to... Oh, I can't retract these. Okay, forget that. I wanted to make sure to keep them safe, but we won't. Okay, seriously, I want to just go straight down. Can I do that? Oh, might be too soon. Uh... Oop. Oh, I broke some panels. I broke some panels. Uh... Okay, science data from the Highlands. Transmit quickly and transmit this and transmit that. Okay, we broke some panels, but it's okay. We're here. <laughs> We've got two left. And we got the Deimos flyby and the science day from Surface of Deimos. So with this, and with that panel sort of floating away, 
Uh, well, we have uh, successfully done the Phobos and Deimos stuff, and I don't really need the other Mars orbiters that I started this video with. But, yeah. And we've got another Jupiter one on the way. Hopefully next time, I, I don't even know if I want to pay attention to that other one that's coming in. Uh, hopefully we can just focus on the crewed mission to the moon, finally. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.